Hello everyone, this is iOS Genius on YouTube channel. Uh, if you're ever in, intriguing to look me up in case you're not browsing the web, you can just easily just go to youtube.com and then once you're there just type in iOS Genius. Oops. Normally it's one word but it can be also two separate words. Here it's like two separate words and here it's just one word. You can easily just select on the link and then you'll be able to see my current videos but also you can select on videos of all videos and I'll have a listing of all my additional videos as well. So let's get into what we created here. So this is how to basically uh, get a grade book from PowerSchool uh, working and running successfully. So we're just going to go ahead and do the PowerSchool but we want to do it with the teachers. Uh, currently I'm logged in will be as admin. So you want to do it as teachers. You want to log in as your teacher or your faculty member, your specific credentials only. Uh, feel free not to use other people's uh, accounts unless you are approved for to do. So we're going to go ahead and log in and sign into this. Once we sign in, uh, it'll, Apple will automatically ask you, do you want to save the keychain? I'm going to always say not now since this is not an account that I use, but I do remember the passwords. So we're just going to go ahead and log in. Uh, here I am actually logged in as this individual here. Uh, but mainly the point is, once you log into Power Teacher under Teacher, uh, you want to go ahead and select on Gradebook on the left-hand side. Uh, so this is going to cover two two things. One, uh, you can for you to have this application Gradebook to be installed onto your Mac, and the prompts that you should be getting in case if it's not working for you or it requires it to do an update. So we're going to go ahead and click here at the bottom here. It failed to open the Power Teacher Gradebook. You technically would have to use this each and every time, but this is web-based, so you have to do it all, all and every time. So basically, you have to open Gradebook to get in here to launch it. So what we're going to do is actually install the application locally on your Mac, so you don't need to actually log into Gradebook unless you have other needs to get into here for. So we're going to go ahead and select on the here, where it says click here for further assess of the problem. You want to go ahead and download Power Teacher Gradebook. The instructions I'm providing you is pretty much the same instructions that are listed here, though the only overview is that I'm walking you through the process. So we're going to go ahead and download Power Teacher in a Gradebook, and we're going to go to my downloads, and you're going to see there's no Gradebook in here. So we're going to go ahead and select this. It drops it in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open this, and then you see there's a Gradebook right there. So Gradebook's in my downloads. So what I'm going to do is you should be advisable just go ahead and move the gradebook that you have here that's been downloaded you want to go ahead and put that into applications folder once you put it into the applications folder uh, it's better because it's already saved in your application and then if you like at your leisure you can go ahead and close this window sometimes when you're trying to attempt to download or launch gradebook from the application of PowerSchool you will be prompted with this message which is popping up to open Gradebook, you need a Java SE 6 runtime version. Uh, this is basically a secondary install of Java, of the main Java install, which main Java install is normally when you go to java.com. And uh, we can do that right now, just for verification. And if you do free Java download, or do I have Java, which is listed right below, uh, if you do the free Java download, uh, this is basically downloading a whole full install. Uh, so on top of the full install, this is a secondary install that's not installed with the original install. So anyways, let's move further. Uh, once that's uh, once you've gone ahead and updated and installed this Java SE, you can go ahead and go to the application. Now you will may be prompted with the, oops, I'm already in Finder. Uh, you may be prompted once you try to open Gradebook, you're going to come up with a a window that's going to tell you that the gradebook has been corrupted or damaged and it needs to be moved to the trash. So let's go ahead and we're going to hopefully get that error message. Yeah, there you go. Wonderful. We got the error message. So this is an error message that some teachers, faculty members are receiving. They're not sure what to do at this point and they're kind of stuck. So what is the best way to do is this gradebook is damaged and can't be open. You should move it to the trash. So what's going to happen is the gradebook that I have that's actually bouncing may also be deleted, but let's see. We'll go to Applications. Here's the gradebook. We're going to move this over. And then as I select Move Trash, it's going to take it out of your applications and put it to the trash can. So we're going to move. 
there it goes it deletes it but it's physically still down here so when you try to open this it's just going to give you a question mark meaning that link that you had in your applications is not there available anymore so the best way to do is just go ahead and drag this pull this up in a certain area and you want to just go ahead and give the little trash ball bin where you can see right there it looks a little paper ball at the bottom there that's actually this is the best way to do it or you can also you can leave it and drop it anywhere in the screen that gives you the paper ball or just drop it into the trash can directly once that's done you'll be all great and fine now to get bypass to that screen where it says damage of gradebook what you want to do is actually go to your security system preferences and under system preferences you want to select on security and privacy once you select on this bottom left corner and you want to go ahead and enter your password whichever what that might be and the reason why it's stopping you because it's here it is selected by default by Mac unless you unless you yourself or an IT admin has already changed this option so basically it's a Mac App Store and identify developers so allow apps downloaded from so now if you download any application that is not from the Mac App Store or is not on their list of identified developers which is gradebook is not listed under Apple's identified developers you are going to be prompted with a message at each time which we're going to get to it in a moment it's going to say are you sure you want to open this because it was downloaded from an unknown source or unknown developer etc and that goes for any other application you download if it's not downloaded from the Mac App Store or an identified developer from Apple so we're going to go ahead and click anywhere once we click anywhere, you'll be prompted with a message which says choosing anywhere uh, makes your Mac less secure. Yes, it does, but as long as you're watching out what you click on to the internet and what's downloading to your Mac, normally you get a prompt up message for your password each time for it to be installed. Sometimes, rarely, you'll never be asked for a password and it'll somehow squeeze through and be installed. Is there a way to prevent that? Yes, there is. Uh, to prevent that is to leave it at Mac App Store identify developers but the problem is if you wanted to download per se you want to download Firefox you won't be able to do download Firefox because it's not listed under the identified developers you would have to select anywhere um, so here let's say for an example here's Firefox and I'm gonna open it and it should prompt me a message here it is Firefox is an application downloaded from the internet so this is the extra security this is a security that's going to prompt you each and every time. So we're going to cancel that. We're going to change this to anywhere because we want Gradebook to be installed. So allow from everywhere. That's all you need to do with this screen. Go ahead and close the screen now. You want to go back to your Safari or your browser. Specify a browser you want to use. You want to go ahead and go log into the teachers. And if you're already logged in or remember you, if uh, you were not logged in, it will be asking you for your credentials. There you go. It logged me back in. Not saying that it remembers the password, but it does remember cache in these last few minutes. So we're going to go ahead and hit Gradebook. We're going to select on click here for to further assess the problem. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and download Power Teacher Gradebook. You can go ahead and close Safari if you wanted to. It's really up to you. Doesn't really matter any point this f further. So now we go to our downloads. There's the Gradebook. And then you want to select your gradebook, left click, drag, and move gradebook to your applications so that it's ready available at whenever you need it. Now, the best other alternative, if people don't like to be opening Finder, go to Applications each time and look for the application. Just drag the application after it's been copied to the Applications folder. Drag it from the Applications folder now and put it somewhere on your dock. And then that's making a shortcut available to look into your application so you don't have to actually open the window anymore. So we're going to go ahead and open this and now it's going to say, hey, Gradebook is an application downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? Now here, as you can see, Safari downloaded this file uh, on an unknown date. So since it's not from the Mac App Store and it's not an identified developer, it's going to show this information. So now it's going to actually going to go ahead and open it. So watch this. We're going to go ahead and open, wait for a few bounces. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes shorter, depending on the internet speed or your performance on your computer. Uh, so now we have Power Teacher open. It's a 2.7. It's a grade book. There's a username that's already pre-populated in. Sometimes it's not in there, so you have to go ahead and put in your username. It can either be a username or it can be a full email account. Uh, you go ahead and put in your password. For the school 
up here on top, you can leave it on select because Power Teacher normally remembers uh, when you try to log in, it's going to check all the specific Chicago locations or school locations to log you into Power Teacher. If it doesn't, it's always advisable to just select the drop down, select your known school, and then it'll log you into that school database. Uh, for ours, it's normally Norton Academy. You can do faculty and staff, but the only problem is I've noticed I came across with some individuals, it doesn't work for them. So they'll have to do Norton Academy or leave it under select for school and it'll self populate. Uh, so you want to go ahead and self populate, meaning after you log in, not prior to you log in. So here we're going to go ahead and our, enter our password. And then once we enter our password, we should be able to log in and the window will open up. You will be prompted with another message, and there's the message. Terminate other sessions, uh, stating that you were probably on a moment ago, you were, but you know you were not, and you know there's issues. Now, correction, you do possibly have another session open, is because we had Safari open, and we logged into PowerSchool. That's why. But uh, since we quit out of it, it still thinks you're physically logged on. Uh, since the appropriate way is to select log off in the top right corner of PowerSchool. So we're going to go ahead and select on terminate other sessions. Once we select on that, give it a few minutes or seconds, and there you go. It opens up Power Teacher Gradebook. Uh, hopefully this helps out everyone. If you guys have any questions or uh, comments or questions, uh, feel free to put them down to the bottom. You can also put in and select on subscribe if you enjoy my videos as I will go ahead and continue to put more additional videos on my YouTube channel to help anyone else out there in the educational, life, technology, Apple, Windows, uh, solutions, and even Galaxy tabs. Uh, so thank you and have a good day. This is iOS Genius on YouTube.